What's up, y'all? What's up, family? This is <laughs> this is this is Beyond Us Beauties. Um, we're Vivacious Beauties. I'm Giovanna. I'm Renee. And welcome back to our channel. I just I can't. I feel like that was just so like not right. It just didn't feel right. It didn't roll off the tongue. But you know what? It is what it is. We just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it. Um, oh. yeah. Welcome to our channel, y'all. Um. If you are new, make sure you subscribe down below, like this video, go check out all our other videos if you haven't, get familiar with who we are, and come back to this one. But we are doing a video on Black History Month. This is day three of Black History Month, and we, as we told y'all, we're trying to get into these individuals that have changed the world in some type of way, and we are just going to talk about... Benjamin Banneker. I don't know if it's Banneker or uh, Banneker or whatever. I think it's Banneker, but you know, they could have pronounced it different back then. I have no idea. But that is who we are going to get into today. So stay tuned. If you have any um, historical facts that you want to tell us or anything that you want to fact check, just comment that down below. Be polite. Disclaimer, as always, we are doing stuff off of our knowledge from school, off of research that we've done, books that we have read, videos we have watched, and so on and so forth. So try to be polite when watching this video. So let's just get into it. Ah, I feel so uncomfortable. Huh? <laughs> Period. Period, be. Period, poo. Okay. He was the first extraordinary scientist, um, astronomer, mathematician, and inventor in America to be recognized as a black man. He was born November 1733, November 9th, 1733, <laughs> in Maryland. Hey, in Baltimore, Maryland, right? Benjamin's mom purchased slaves, okay, in Maryland at the time. Um, mind you, she was an old servant herself, a former servant, and her mother was a former servant, but they purchased slave for, slaves from Maryland, slaves, servants from Maryland, and eventually got married to them and had Benjamin, or married to him and had Benjamin. The mother got married as well. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And then they had Benjamin. So, yeah. All right, y'all. All right. So at a very young age, Benjamin was very intelligent. He... I mean, he basically self-educated himself. He loved to read, write, all that good stuff. And I believe when he was enrolled in school is when he found his passion for mathematics. I believe that was, yeah. Okay, and um, he um, enjoyed mathematics so much that he actually created these problems, you know. Like, who creates problems? Created problems for himself to solve for enjoyment. That's how you know. Like doing the Suzuku puzzles. Oh, I love Suzuku. Yeah. But that's how you know yeah. that you're a real mathematics fan when you start creating your own problems just to solve it yourself for enjoyment. That's that's that right here. Because my grandmother is like that on both of my parents' side, um, actually. But like those Sudoku puzzles, crossword puzzles, mathematics, the, the ones with the numbers, the Sudoku or whatever you call it, I, I can't. Like, some of them are fun, but then there's some that get, like, they start getting tough. Yes, mm -hmm. and oh, I yeah. just, I can't. But, uh -huh. hey, everybody has their little perks and stuff like that. You know, back then they didn't have no tablets and all that type of stuff. So, it, it you know, you had choices to either read and stuff like that. So, I'm sorry to kind of throw that in there, but. You're fine. Yeah. Huh? That's it. Oh, okay. So his grandmother is actually the one who taught him how to read and write. So he, he, you know, school kind of helped because he went to like a, I can't remember what the school was called, but. Quaker, a Quaker a, school? A Quaker school. But a Quaker school is like, I guess a school that's focused on like religious or like certain, I don't even say certain beliefs, but like it's a. A concentrated school, you're trying yes. to say? So maybe, but. Yeah, I know that probably helped with a lot of stuff, but his grandmother is the one that actually taught him how to read and write. 
So, Benjamin Banneker, at a certain age, he owned his own land. He had his own property, um, 100 acres of farmland, which was also, you know, his family's property and so on and so forth. And he got very, like, really in, interested um, and invested in the water lines, how to get the crops to grow properly, and just taking care of the farmlands and stuff like that. And it's very significant because later on, as you will learn, um, it had a lot to do with the astronomical efforts and research and studies that he put into his almanac i hope that's how you pronounce that almanac his book um or his passage whatever you want to call it it's te technically like a book but like more of a pamphlet form in my opinion oh maybe yeah huh was it like a journal kind of like a journal but um him being interested in farm farming how the when the moon would you know set or um rise and sunset and sunrise and just the way of the top like just he was very interested in the nature aspect of life and so on and so forth so that that later on in this this video we'll kind of talk about that so yeah now back to what renee was saying with the benjamin banneker being interested in mathematics and solve problem solving and stuff like that so i'm not sure if he came across a man or a woman or whoever i'm gonna say a man but i'm not sure he came across somebody with a pocket watch and then got intrigued by the pocket watch and decided if he like he asked the person if he could borrow it he took it apart he studied the mechanics of the watch um and made his scientific scientific observations wrote it down and stuff like that and eventually he created the standing clock i don't know what it's called it's basically a standing clock i, I don't know it's like a what a standing a striking clock a standing striking clock we all know clocks had been around for many many years but in america it was not yet well known you know what i mean it was not yet a thing so he created it, made it handmade out of wood, and it was a clock that ne that striked precisely on time every time and was efficient. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's that's the main reason why we're talking about him is that, and then of course there's some other stuff. So I'll let Renee explain her part of it, and yeah. All right, y'all. So as we <laughs> mentioned. Um, Benjamin was very interested in science, specifically astronomy, mm -hmm. and I believe he gained his interest in a <laughs> in astronomy because a man, I believe, moved from Pennsylvania. See, here we go. <laughs> Can't say Pennsylvania to save our lives. I'm trying to do this video, Pennsylvania. Right. It's one of those. Right. It's like Massachusetts. <laughs> it's yeah. just so extra. Okay, redo. Re More time. <sighs> all right so as we mentioned earlier benjamin really enjoyed science specifically astronomy and i believe he gained his interest in astronomy when a man from pennsylvania moved nearby him i guess and he had a mill and i guess that mill consisted of him grainy grain grinding grains um benjamin gained interest in it and he actually asked the man like you know how does this work? You know, just questions. He's, he was just naturally intrigued with new things, obviously. So the man, being being a kind man, obviously, was like, sure, you know, let me give you some knowledge on this. So I guess he, the man gave him information about astronomy. Yeah, about astronomy. And Benjamin took that full force. You know, he, he read the information, sucked it into his knowledge and just excelled at whatever he wanted to do with astronomy so with that being said in 1789 at the age of 58 he correctly predicted a solar eclipse by studying astronom astronomical um, calculations and and it's funny because his predictions which were accurate <laughs> like he correctly predicted a solar eclipse um actually contradicted many known well-known um math mathematicians and ast astronomists so that's crazy he wasn't even he wasn't a professional in this he learned he self-educated himself in astronomy and was able to predict this event hands down award goes to him. Yes. incredible yes um 
all right y'all so before i get into the next thing which would be um the fact that benjamin banneker sent his alm almanac almanac to thomas jefferson which at the time was the u.s secretary of state I want to talk about the reason why he even, um, Benjamin Banneker even went to the neighbor and stuff to see the mill. Um, cause the mill is called a, it's like a grist mill or something, which like I said, and like Renee said, I didn't say anything. Renee said it, it produces grains, but he, he had, you know, he had this clock at the time. So everybody was coming to see the clock. They wanted, they were interested in the clock, but he felt like he just didn't have someone to have an intellectual conversation with. No one, no one around him at the time. Uh, was really on that level until he met that man and I think their names are like the Ellicott or something from Pennsylvania until he met them um, he didn't really have anybody to really have no conversations with until he met him so that's that's also why all of that happened now um, eventually Benjamin after studying all the astronomy and um, some other things of that nature he was just like you know what I'm going to write a passage which was the almanac um, I hope I'm saying that right, but he decided to write a passage. It had a bunch of things like um, solar information. What what would you call that? Astronomical Ast information, um, predict science, scientific predictions. It had modern medicine, tree medicine, um, just a, many other things of that magnitude and he sent it to Thomas Jefferson at the time, like I told you, which was the Secretary of State. And um he he just he wanted to make it known to thomas jefferson and the world that as a black man it is unacceptable that they think another race is inferior um you know what i mean to another race like because the intelligent matches the intelligence matches that of white caucasians white caucasians what Girl, this whole video is a dub right now. Like, I'm about to just say, let's just redo it from the top because I just can't. Please don't. I'm not. So, all the things that went into Benjamin Banneker's Almanac book was, was just important to him in the world, in the sun and the moon, the birds, and the lotus. Like, I don't huh like oh my gosh y'all to be honest he was an intelligent man and he he sent his almanac Al almanac um book to thomas jefferson because he wanted to show the world and show him that african americans or black people were capable of equal rights and equal opportunities because they were just as intelligent as a non-black individual just as intelligent as a caucasian he wanted that to be known and he was putting putting forth his discoveries his mathematical equations his um scientific equations and predictions and so on and so forth and that was his way of saying like we are intelligent as long as we are given the opportunity to be so that's why he sent it to thomas jefferson now thomas jefferson he responded back to the letter i think it was like two weeks later he responded back to it and he commended him on his efforts and his um his predictions and his, his research and so on and so forth and he he took it a step forward and i'll let renee tell you what that step was because i've yeah. stepped out i'm about tired <laughs> I'm about yeah tired. Okay, so not to mention, Giovanna was all correct in what she just said, but um, Benjamin also provided a letter to Thomas Jefferson. I was going to say Thomas Franklin. Yeah, who's Thomas Franklin? <laughs> Who is Thomas Franklin? I don't know. We, we don't oh. know. You don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. He provided a letter to Thomas Jefferson along with the almanac. Um, basically explaining why there should be an abolishment of slavery. And like Giovanna said, he provided proof basically that black people, African Americans can provide the same capabilities and intellectual capacities as um, Caucasian individuals. So Thomas Jefferson then sent that almanac to a French philosopher who was also in the French Academy of Science. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Okay, enough for real. Let's redo this right here. <laughs> we not redoing nothing. No, this last sentence. Huh? This last sentence. I'm like, I'm about tired of this. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Thomas Jefferson then sent the almanac to a French philosopher. I'm so sorry. I I will butcher his name, so Javon, please just insert the name. Okay. Um, yes, and that French philosopher was a part of the, I hate you, <laughs> a part of the French, gosh, you're making me forget. <laughs> just cut it out. Just, 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 just. Here's the first part that I did. I'm done. <laughs> no. Repeat it. <laughs> that French philosopher was also a part of the French Academy of Science, so that's big. Having it, having his almanac being sent there directly, like that's just straight, straight from, to the that, Most High. That's praise to the Most to the High. Huh? <laughs> I say you're going to the top. You got top philosophers looking at this almanac, and you're just a black man, like. I mean, at this time, you're probably well known, but still, you are a black yes. man. For his wooden standing clock that don't mess up. He was well known. <laughs> Give him his credit, his roses yeah. while he was here. But um, yeah. once Benjamin Banneker sent this letter in or got it published and stuff like that and got the response back from Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson published it and so on and so forth, all the abolish, abolish, uh, abolishers and all that, abolitionist. What do you, how do you say that? Like, I'm not Abolish saying that. Abolishness. Abolishness. No, um, a it's abolished. Shinist. Abolishness. What? What? Abolitionist. Abolitionist. Abolishness. No. <laughs> Abolitionist. <laughs> this is really not funny. Like, <laughs> abolishness. Abolitionist. A abolitionist. A abolitionist. No. <laughs> Abolition. Say abolition. Abolition. Nist. Abolition. Ist. by countless people in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and so on and so forth, and other things in history. So that is honestly why he's famous. I'm done. It's a wrap. <laughs> I'm over it. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm really over it. <laughs> I'm real life over it. I mean, it's funny because it's horrible. <laughs> it's like, we are horrible. We're horrible because it's like, keep in mind, y'all, we are running off of zero sleep. Yes. We honestly, like, I read up on him. I learned about him a long time ago, okay? And then I read up on him a long time ago. So we're, we try to do a refresher, but it's just like when you take a test. You might refresh. You might refresh yourself off of information you think you already know, but then when you finally go to take that test, you start forgetting stuff. That's what this instant is. So it's just like, I know we know the information. And since we're like talking and we're with y'all and we're with each other and it's funny and stuff and we're messing up, it's like, it's hard to kind of just say what we want to say. It's not like a test where it's quiet and you could just think and do what you got to do. Like, she's talking, she's looking at me talk, vice versa. It's just like, it's a lot of pressure. And we see you. <sighs> Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Seriously, bro, this is just terrible. So we're so sorry, Benjamin uh, Banneker. I was about to call him Benjamin Button. The nerve. Go talk again, cause your phone, the phone messed up. Uh, Out. Hello. Yeah, it all. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Also, unfortunately, bear. Oh, wow. Barry? Wow. You've been watching The Flash, haven't you? Yeah. So he died um, 
on Sunday, October 9th on 18, in 1806 in his sleep, unfortunately. And <laughs> and I believe his house actually burnt down on what on his funeral, the day of his funeral. Um, which was the eleventh. It, uh, it was the eleventh, October eleventh, like two days uh, later. Yeah, yeah, October eleventh, eighteen oh six. His house burnt down, and actually destroyed most of his, all if of not his. all. Okay, all of his. All of his work, exactly, including the clock. That unfortunately, like there were some there were some people that was just like this man. I don't know. I, I okay. He had the cure to cancer. That's what it was. Parents, he was a. They were a hater. Whoever burnt down his house was a hater. Okay, that's all I got to say. A hater didn't want his information to get out because you know, like when someone really is about to change the world. They don't like that too much. They can sense it. It's and jealousy. It it's en jealousy. Yeah. Oh, and he was never married. And I wonder if he ever had kids. That was something I just I thought of. Like he was never married, and I don't think he ever had kids. So I'm wondering if he ever had any um, sexual encounters or anything. Is that weird that I think like that? But I'm just very curious on like how his life was because. In our society, it would be nerdy, the loner, and stuff like that. But he was very intelligent, a scholar. And, well, he was just very intelligent. I can't even call him a scholar. I feel like if he was well-known, like, just like celebrities now. Wow, I said it sounded like that. Just like celebrities now. I feel like maybe women could have been attracted to him because of how popular he was, especially his inventions and all that um, I want to say mm, because humans are humans and some humans you know specifically go after guys if they have money or if they're well known whatever I feel like of course there could have been some women throwing themselves at him I don't know if he had any sexual advances I mean he's a guy maybe <laughs> I don't know but honestly, y'all, um, the purpose of this video was to say that this man was self-taught. The purpose of him, after this crazy video, is that the man was self-taught. He was a scientist. He was a what else, Renee? Oh, he was, <laughs> he was a scientist, but what encapsulated being a scientist was, you know, him gaining those titles as being an astronomer, um... Um, astronomer, a mathematician, um, what else? Life, life, um, mechanisms, all that stuff. Um, he, he was just an, a very intelligent person, um, that was, he put himself, how do I say this? He, he put forth effort into learning and he achieved something. And because of that, he wanted it to be known that just because you're of black descent, because you are black does not mean that you are unable to be intelligent or unable to um, and figure it on else. Yes. Yeah, or just the simple fact that you're unable to have equal rights and stuff like that shouldn't be shouldn't be a thing. More to story. Like we should all be able to have equal rights. We should all be able to have equal opportunities. To do certain things and we're but we're intelligent no matter what our skin complexion is so that's the main reason why he was important was because of that he made a wooden clock off of studying someone else's pocket watch he made a, a whole book a passage that he wrote at the time where there were other black individuals and even caucasian individuals and so on and so forth that weren't even um what is it liter like literacy wasn't good at the time very illiterate in that geographical location yeah yes the reason why he was important is because he crafted this clock by basically self-educating himself he didn't you know everybody starts at ground zero and then you eventually build yourself up to something he started in ground zero um more importantly in an area that was in an area that was very mm -hmm. illiterate so, well, not only that, he self-educated himself in many, re many aspects of science, 
to the point where he was able to build a clock. He was able to make a, um, what is it called again? Oh, he was able to create an almanac. He was, he was able to basically just provide proof that African Americans have the capabilities and intellectual capabilities, I guess, um, as white people. And that's on period, baby. It's like, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me be serious. Um, he basically proved that African Americans have the capabilities and intellectual capabilities, um, as their white counterparts, you know? So just because you're black, I mean that you are inferior to anybody else. You have the same possibilities as white people. I mean, you may not have the same resources, that's for sure. But as long as you, like Javonna said, as long as you put in that effort, you can definitely go somewhere. Yes. And that's exactly what Benjamin did. Yes. So, this is the end of the video. <laughs> we are we apologize, okay, for just the, the random giggles and the stuff like that. Because to us, it is important. It is important to know these people. It's important to say the facts and say exactly what happened. But like we always say, um... If there's something in in the video that you don't agree with, write it down in the comments. We're not historians. We we don't study um, black history. You know what I mean? Like, this is the closest to studying that we've done since we've been in school. So, you know what I mean? Y'all tell us what you think about this particular person and, and just have conversations with us in the comments. Now, um, I will say, make sure you subscribe down below. Look out for... Yeah, subscribe, look out for some more videos. Um, check out our other videos. Make sure you check out um, Helen. Helen. Okay. <laughs> it's because of you. Okay. It's because of you. Make sure you check out Henrietta Lacks. And make sure you check out... Um... <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Christmas Addicts. <laughs> I can't. Um, huh? Nothing. Make sure you check out them. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up. And we hope to see you in the next one. Subscribe down below like I already said. <laughs> Bye, Stay guys. in school, kids. <laughs> because this wouldn't happen if you do. <laughs> I mean, Girl. it would. We're smart, intellectual people. We are. <laughs> Toodaloo. Okay. I'm reading it down. I mean, so oh, wow, that's not it. it. Mm. I'm gonna read that. White now. Caucasians, white Caucasians, what? Girl, this whole video is a dub right now. Like, I'm about to just say, let's just redo it from the top because I just can't. Please don't. I'm not. I'm just about to repeat that part. Benjamin Banneker, I was about to say Benjamin Button. Yeah. <laughs> Benjamin Button. <laughs> Benjamin Banneker. So all the things that went into Benjamin Banneker's almanac book was was just important to him in the world, in the sun, and the moon, the birds, and the lotus. Like I don't, huh? Like oh my gosh, y'all. My mother got married as well. You know what I'm trying to say. And then they had Benjamin. So yeah. <laughs> I can see like half of your faces off. But anywho, yeah. That's I'm like dead. It. You're weird. Uh, don't do that. That's creepy. <laughs> All right, y'all. December 9th, 19, 19, 1871, 1733. Oh, my gosh. We can't. I can't. I can't. Okay. He was born. He was born November 1733. November 9th, 1733. <laughs> in Maryland. Hey, in Baltimore, Maryland, right? Um, To a... He was born. He was born November... <laughs> 
<laughs> I freaking can't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. 